Blogging is a fabulous way to increase traffic to your website and to establish yourself as the expert in your field by consistently putting up helpful content on whatever it is that your topic is. In this video, I'll be sharing the step-by-step -step for how to get started on blogging in Squarespace. But before we dive in, there's something I want to know from you. I want to know how it is that you plan to use your blog. What sort of content do you hope to share with the world? What topic are you going to blog on? Share that for me below in the comments. And for the best Squarespace tips and site building best practices, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when a new video drops every single week. All right. So if you've been following along with the Squarespace 7.1 series here on my channel, then you should be feeling pretty confident about picking a template and also getting started with your site built. But if you're just joining us and don't have a site yet, I definitely encourage you to hit pause on this one and then circle back around to this video on picking a template in Squarespace version 7.1, and then also this video on how to start building a website in Squarespace 7.1, as they cover some pretty important basics that you're gonna need for this. I'll also link those in the description below for you as well. So just a quick recap, all the templates in the Squarespace 7.1 template shop have access to the exact same features and functionality, and every single one can be made to look and act exactly like the next using the platform's built-in features. So if you like the look and feel of a template, go ahead and grab it, even if it wasn't specifically designed for blogging, because a blog can easily be added to any one of these pre-made designs. All right, so unless your template came built in with a blog, we'll need to start by adding one in. So in the back end of your site, just head to Pages, click this plus sign in your Unlinked section to add a new page, and then click Blog Page. Choose whichever starting point looks best to you, but just know that you'll be able to easily change the layout after it's been added. Then just name it blog. We'll leave it in the unlinked section for now, but when you have a post or two published and you're ready to have your blog appear in your main navigation, you'll just drag and drop your blog page up into your main navigation section so it appears as a link in your header. So when you added a blog page, you are actually adding two things to your site. You added this blog page, the one your visitors see and scroll through to decide what they want to read next. And then if you click on your blog page in your pages panel over here on the left, you also added a behind the scenes blog storage area where you add, edit, and manage your actual posts. So let's start by adding in our first post. To avoid looking super cookie cutter, I'd say go ahead and delete out all the demo content your template came with. Then to add your posts, just click this plus button. Go ahead and add in your title here to name your post. Now, one thing you might notice is that your blog post builder looks pretty similar to your regular page builder. You can hover over the page, choose and insert an insert point, and drop pretty much any type of content block that you can on a normal page, and even drag and drop things side by side or one on top of the other to look like they would on a normal page. The only thing that's different is that you don't have individual sections like you do on a regular page, and therefore cannot tweak the section settings individually. So any settings you tweak will affect the whole post. So go ahead and add in your written content, making sure to break it up into easy to digest sections with clear headings. This makes it easier for skimmers to quickly find what they're looking for, but it also helps with your SEO or search engine optimization, or basically how close your site will appear on the top of page one on Google when someone goes to search your topic. When the Google robots comb your blog post to see whether or not your content matches a user search, it's gonna start by skimming your post for relevant keywords, starting with your titles. To add a section title, click on the text block to bring up your font toolbar, highlight the bit of text you want to change, and choose one of your header formats. The actual font family, like Times New Roman or Arial, get decided in your site styles under your design panel. If you could use a little help with learning to customize your fonts, you'll want to circle back around to this video. In that video, it'll walk you through the steps of customizing your fonts for your whole site. I'll also pop a link to that in the description below. Now, add in your images to make your post more interesting and to break up longer bits of text. It also makes your post more shareable on social and Pinterest, which is basically free marketing done for you. Once you have all your content on the page, you can start to tweak your blog post appearance and layout settings. To do this, hover over your post and click the little pencil icon. Let's look at what you can tweak here on the page. You have content width, which decides how much white space or padding you'll have on either side of your content. It's best not to have it go too wide as wall-to-wall -to -wall text can be pretty hard for a visitor to read. 
Text alignment, this only affects your blog post title. The actual text alignment for your content gets decided using the text toolbar in each text block that you add. Your metadata is the little extra info that goes along with each post, like its publish date, author, and any tags or categories you'd have added. I'll show you where those get added in each post in just a minute. You can use these settings to hide or show them and to decide whether you want the main metadata to appear above or below your title. I'll also show you how to add and edit your author profiles later in this video. Delimiter style. This refers to the little dash or buttons that separate your metadata, so you can customize the look of that here. And header spacing. This little slider decides how much space you have between your title and the content of your post. Next, we'll head under the Colors tab in our blog post style settings to change which of your 10 color themes you would like to apply to this one post. These color themes are also decided over in your site styles in your design panel. So if you need help setting your color palette or color themes before you go apply them here within your post, make sure to catch this video. I'll also pop a link to that in the description below. Any changes you make here in a blog post will only affect that one post. So you could technically use a different color theme and layout for each type of post you write. But if you don't wanna have a mess with these settings every time you go to write a post, my best tip for you would be to get your first post looking just the way you want it, then duplicate it and create a sort of template. To do this, just hit save on your post, then click these three little dots and hit duplicate. Then, since this is just a copy of your original post and you plan to use it as a template, you might delete out all the written content and just stick in some sort of placeholders to make your job easier. Leave your new duplicate as a draft and duplicate it each time you sit down to write out a new post. You could even create several templates if you have different layouts or settings you wanna swap out for different types of posts. The last thing we need to do before hitting publish on our post is to head into its settings. You can do that either by clicking these three little dots and clicking settings, or if you already have the post open, you can also hit the little gear icon. Inside your settings window, you'll find a few different settings tabs. First is your content tab, where you'll find status. This is where you go to change your post visibility on your blog. You'll wanna leave it as a draft until you're done working on it. Once it's done, you can mark it needs review if you know you wanna come back and proofread it one last time, or if it still needs a blog post thumbnail or something uploaded to it. You can also schedule it, though it's going to go live whether it's done or not, so make sure you only schedule it if it's 100% ready. Or you can just publish it now by marking it as published. Tags and categories. As you write more and more content, you'll want to organize it using tags and categories to make your blog easier to navigate for your readers. But you can also use categories and tags to tell summary blocks which content to display. Think of categories like your main topics that you write about. So if you're running a home living blog, your categories might be cleaning, organization, DIY renovations, and home decor. But your tags would help you further organize your posts. So within your home decor categories, maybe you have living room decor, bedroom decor, and bathroom decor. Comments. You can choose to allow or not allow comments on that specific post by toggling this button on or off, as well as a few advanced options like scheduling comments to turn on after a later date. Next is your options tab where you'll find thumbnail, the preview of your post that readers will see when they scroll through the posts on your main blog page. The URL, you'll want to change this to match only your most important keywords. So if you've written a post called top 10 spring cleaning tips for totally overhauling that gross guest bathroom, then you'd make your URL something like spring clean guest bathroom. Author, if you have more than one person who's regularly contributing content to your site, you can select their name from this little drop down to give them credit for this post. To add a new author to your list, you'll want to go to home, settings, permission, and add basic author. Excerpt. You may also want to give a short explanation or teaser for your post. This is what will appear in the preview if someone shares your post's link on social or if someone comes across your post in a Google search. They can also be displayed under your blog post thumbnail on your main blog page. Featured post. You can also choose to make your post a featured post. So that if you include a summary block somewhere on your site to display blog content, you'll be able to only display the featured posts if you want to. The next tab you have is for SEO. In here, you'll have the option to change what appears in Google search preview for your post. You can also customize which image you want to appear when your post is shared to social media by uploading it here under the social image. Otherwise, it will go with whatever you've used for your thumbnail. You can also choose to automatically share your post to social when it goes live. To do that, click connect accounts and connect which accounts you'd like to post to. You will only have to connect your accounts once. Then all you have to do is check that the automatic share buttons are toggled on beside the accounts you want that post to push to.
The final option you'll see is to add a location. This is for businesses who are location-based and want to have their business appear in search for customers near that specific location. All right, so now you know the steps to adding your blog and creating your first few posts, but there is one very important thing that needs to happen before you launch your blog to the world, and that is learning to customize your main blog page. Now, next week, I'll be sharing the how-to to doing some tweaks to the layout and look of your blog page, as well as a few hacks for when those built-in settings just aren't quite enough to get your blog page feeling on brand with the rest of your site. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and tap that little bell button to be notified when that video drops next week. In the meantime, let's talk about how your blog will fit in with the rest of your site strategy. Before you go too crazy building out your entire site, there are a few key things that need to happen to make sure that your site actually appeals to your ideal client or customer, and that includes things like nailing down exactly who that person is, figuring out the most vital information that visitors will be searching for on your website, gathering inspiration and creating your design mood board in Squarespace so that your design is consistent site-wide and you can start to establish some brand recognition, and also properly prepping your site content prior to uploading it. Even if you already have a site, you can really benefit from taking a step back and really looking at these different things in the foundation of your website. So whether you're just getting started or your business has been online for a few years, my free Squarespace pre-design workbook and checklist is just the tool that you need to make sure your site content and strategy lines up perfectly with who it is you're trying to serve and how to serve them. So I'll pop the link to that in the description below. Thanks for following along. If you found this video helpful, please do let me know by hitting the like button and commenting it below. Wondering what to watch next? Check out these videos too.